open the season against a powerful University of Massachusetts team, which was to go on to a very successful season in the Yankee Conference. After taking the opening kickoff, the Big Green marched the length of the field on a series of plays, such as this 10-yard jaunt by Tom Spangenberg behind the trap block of left guard Boyce. Quarterback Bill King added 10 yards by making a pass and sprinting out around left end. However, after driving over 80 yards, Dartmouth was held for downs on the Massachusetts three. As the second quarter starts, the Indians again move into scoring territory when King fakes to Spangenberg up the middle and then passes to fullback Tom Parkinson for 17 yards. King then holds the ball while senior right Bill Wellstead puts Dartmouth out in front with a 29-yard field goal. The Indian defense ranked among the toughest in the country. Watch Dartmouth's left linebacker. That's big Don McKinnon shooting through to smear the Massachusetts play for a loss. Dartmouth's other senior linebacker, left guard Eddie Boyce, demonstrates that he is also adept at stopping opponents' plays before they get started. The tricky Dartmouth offense confuses Massachusetts when King laterals to Vancouver and then takes a return handoff before rolling out to the right and passing to Charlie Greer for 25 yards. It took the Indians less than two minutes to score in the second half. Bill King rolled out around in and smashed into the end zone for the touchdown. Wellstead added the conversion. Linebacker Don McKinnon continued to demoralize the Massachusetts attack by shooting through the interference from his linebacker position. Billy King starts another Dartmouth drive going as he fakes first to the right half and then to the left half before rolling out and passing to Charlie Greer for another 25 yards. King then throws another delayed pass to left halfback Tom Spangenberg. A moment later, Bill Wellstead kicks his second field goal of the afternoon to put Dartmouth out in front 13-3. At the start of the fourth quarter, the Big Green attack rolled downfield seven or eight yards each play. On this play, King swings around left end behind the blocking of Greer, Benzian, and Raska. Sophomore Gary Wilson goes in for the score behind the blocking of Creelman, Parkinson, and Myers. Dartmouth defensive platoon, known as the Savages, swarms all over the Massachusetts quarterback before he has a chance to throw. A few plays later, Candy Davis, outstanding sophomore linebacker, intercepts a Massachusetts pass and returns it 33 yards. offensive unit, known as the Tomahawks, then takes over. Keibel and Depphouse open a big hole as Gary Wilson explodes through the line. Following the touchdown, Wellstead added the conversion for his ninth point of the day. Dartmouth starts off the season with a very decisive 27-3 victory. It had been raining for two days when the Big Green took the field against the Quakers from the University of Pennsylvania. The sloppy going didn't slow up the Indian attack, however, as they moved the ball consistently. Tom Spangenberg looks like a human battering ram as he lowers his head and drives for first down behind the trap block of Eddie Boyce. On the next play, operating from the famed V formation, the Dartmouth line opens a huge hole for right halfback Dave Lawson. After faking the Spangenberg, King hands back to Lawson, who drives to the 10-yard line, but a penalty sets Dartmouth back and a fourth down field goal was missed. When Penn first has the ball, linebacker Don McKinnon shoots through to pile up the Quakers' interference and the ball carrier as well. On the next play, it became obvious to Penn that they were going to have a tough time gaining through the big green line as Rungi, Curran, Blumenshine, and McKinnon gang tackle the Penn tailback for a two-yard loss. Another long Indian drive is halted by a fumble, so Dartmouth's defensive unit, the Savages, come into the game and live up to their name as six of them swarm over the Penn ball carrier. 
swing right formation, Lawson takes a toss from King and follows a wall of blockers for a good gain around left end. Although Dartmouth completely dominated the play, there is no score in the first half. Watch left end Charlie Greer bury the pen tackle on the first play of the second half as Dave Lawson picks up 10 yards. The Dartmouth tackles also do a good job of blocking the Penn linebackers as Spangenberg goes up the middle for another first down. It is difficult to throw the wet football accurately, but King sprints out to the left and then passes back to Lawson deep in Penn territory. Again, the Indian drive is halted, however, so when Dartmouth next have the ball, the Tomahawks come into the game. Dana Kelly starts another march with a delayed pass to left half Chris Van Cura. Kelly then fakes the fullback Pete Benzin and hands off to little 5'6 halfback Mel Myers. Mel runs with a lot of determination. And on the next play, the Tomahawk guards, Keibel and Raska, do a fine job of blocking as Kelly again hands off to Myers, who goes in for a touchdown. Wellstead added the extra point to put the green out in front, seven to nothing. A few minutes later, Dartmouth is again in scoring territory, and Bill Wellstead kicks a perfect field goal for another three points. In the fourth period, the Tomahawks again go on the warpath as Mel Myers hits over left guard on a trap play and breaks clear for 20 yards before being caught from behind. Watch the blocking of the center of the line as Kelly fakes to the fullback and hands to Myers on a scissors play up the middle. However, it is a fine play by Dartmouth's defensive team that leads to the final touchdown. Here, safety man Bill Madden leaps up to intercept a long pen pass. A few minutes later, Madden goes over for another Dartmouth touchdown, and the final statistics show that the Big Green marched for 21 first downs in that wet field while holding Penn to a minus 22 yards rushing and not a single first down. Dartmouth's first game away from home was at Providence, Rhode Island against Brown. Brown had started off their season with an impressive victory over Colgate and a tie with Yale, so this was expected to be a closely contested game. The early part of the game was again dominated by Dartmouth's airtight defense. Watch linebackers Don McKinnon and Ed Boyce react when Brown attempts a draw play. On the next play, McKinnon again shows his quick reactions as he drops back and leaps into the air to intercept the Brown aerial. McKinnon's interception leads to a quick touchdown as on the following play, quarterback Bill King rolls out to the right, faking a pass and seeing the way clear turns up field for 30 yards. King then fires a bullet pass to flanker back Tom Spangenberg, who fights his way to the five yard line before being brought down. Two plays later, King went over for a touchdown and Wellstead added the extra point. With Dartmouth's offensive unit, the Tomahawks, in the game, quarterback Dana Kelly drops back, faking a pass, but slips the ball to Chris Van Cura, who slips up the middle for a good gain. In the second quarter, the Dartmouth offense explodes for three touchdowns. Operating from a double wing formation, King fakes first to Parkinson and then to Spangenberg before rolling out to the left behind the blocks of Boyce and Blumenshine. Parkinson throws a key block upfield as King goes for 30 yards before being knocked out of bounds. Captain King then sprints out to the right and throws to right end Scott Creelman, who slides into the end zone for the score. When the Indians next have the ball, it takes them only three plays to score. Left end Charlie Greer takes a pass from King for 20 yards. And on the following play, watch fullback Tom Parkinson cut down the brown end as King fakes a pass and then drives into the end zone for another touchdown. 
Dartmouth's defensive unit, the Savages, come into the game, they immediately swarm all over the Brown passer with a charge being led by fullback Dick Horton and tackle John Matsky. Dana Kelly receives protection from the Tomahawk line as he fires a strike to Mel Myers. And little Mel dodges two men as he carries another 13 yards. He scores as King romps 12 yards for a touchdown behind key blocks by halfback Spangenberg and Lawson. Wellstead added his fourth extra point to give the Green a 28-0 lead. The Indians take the second half kickoff on the one-yard line and march the length of the field. 25 yards were eaten up on this pass from King to Scotty Creelman. Another big gain was made as left halfback Tom Spangenberg makes the fine catch of a King pass on the two-yard line. With only three minutes gone in the second half, Spangenberg smashes over for the touchdown and Coach Blackman pulls out the first team for the remainder of the game. The Indians continue to move the ball successfully as Kelly fakes to fullback Pete Benzian before handing off to right half Jack McLean. On the next play, halfbacks Jack McLean and Chris Van Cura do a great job of blocking as Kelly rolls around in for 16 yards. At the start of the fourth quarter, Kelly fakes to fullback Pete Benzian then completes a long pass to left end Frank Finsway. Two plays later, Kelly goes over for the touchdown. Dartmouth makes a bid for still another score when Chris Van Cura hurdles over the line and cuts back for 35 yards. But on the following play, a penalty nullifies the scoring opportunity. Dartmouth finishes up with a 41 to nothing victory and 27 quarters of play have now gone by since a Brown team last scored on the big green. The powerful Holy Cross Crusaders came to Hanover boasting an undefeated and untied record and a big veteran team that included three outstanding backs who were all considered top pro prospects. Wellstead opens the game by kicking off to the Holy Cross goal line, and the Indians show that they are fired up for this one as Scott Creelman and Bill Curran make a great all-out effort and smash into the Crusader halfback on the 14-yard line. When McCarthy, the Crusaders' great quarterback, attempts to pass to Hennessy, their All-America candidate, Tom Spangenberg pops up to intercept his first of three passes in this game. On a series of steady gains, such as this off-tackle smash by right half Jack McLean, the Indians march downfield only to lose a sure touchdown on a first down fumble on the two yard line. At the start of the second quarter, Dave Perrinchief intercepts a long Holy Cross pass. Spangenberg immediately moves the ball out of dangerous territory as he explodes through the line and does a neat piece of broken field running for 21 yards. Darman starts a scoring drive as quarterback King flanks Spangenberg wide to the left and then hits him on a hook pass, good for a first down. On the next play, King rolls out to the right behind good protection, and then again throws to Spangenberg, who this time is cutting deep down the middle. Bill Wellstead then puts the big green out in front with a 31-yard field goal. A combination of hard rush by linemen such as Greer, Blumenshine, and Sapione, along with perfect pass coverage by backs such as King and McLean, completely frustrates the famed Holy Cross passing attack. One of the five pass interceptions that the alert Indian secondary stole in this game occurred when Tom Parkinson deflected a pass, which is then picked off by King. On the first play in the second half, quarterback King fakes giving the ball to Tom Parkinson and then fakes a pitch out to right half Jack McLean before turning up field and going for 12 yards. King then starts out to the right, but stops and throws to Jack McLean, cutting back up the middle from his wing back position. Holy Cross takes over the ball after recovering a Dartmouth fumble, but when they attempt to send their big fullback up the middle, he is stopped cold by Dartmouth's great Don McKinnon. The Indians start another drive the next time they take over the ball as King completes passes to Tom Spangenberg on three successive plays. 
fullback Tom Parkinson shows his power when he bulls off tackle and smashes his way for 16 yards. The next play is a tricky one as fullback Parkinson moves up into the line between right tackle and right end and the slit left end drops back off the line of scrimmage, thereby making left tackle Jan Dephaus an eligible receiver. Dephaus makes a catch for a 20-yard gain, but the long drive fails to produce a score when Wellstead's field goal attempt is wide. The Crusaders continue to have trouble trying to move the ball against the big green line as halfback Hennessy is spilled for a three-yard loss by McKinnon and Blumenschein. In the fourth quarter, the Crusaders threaten, but quarterback McCarthy is rushed hard by McKinnon and Creelman. His pass is picked off by Tom Spangenberg on the four, and the interference forms rapidly as key blocks are thrown by Parkinson, Sapione, and Creelman. Spangenberg races for 96 yards on one of the most thrilling plays in Dartmouth's history. As he dives into the end zone for the touchdown, Tom is almost smothered by his admirers. Tomahawks control the ball for a good portion of the time in the fourth quarter and ground out four first downs on plays such as this one where Kelly fakes to Benzian and hands to Van Cura hitting off tackle. Bill Wellstead makes a diving catch of a pass from Dana Kelly for another first down. And the game ends with the Big Green still out in front 10 to nothing and Dartmouth clearly established as the outstanding team in New England. Dartmouth could not afford a letdown for the crucial Harvard game played in Cambridge before a television audience of six million. Dartmouth took the opening kickoff and immediately started a long drive. Here, McKinnon, Curran, and Boyce opened a gaping hole in the center of the Harvard line, and Tom Spangenberg popped through for 14 yards. On the following play, the Harvard line is again ripped open as little 158-pound Jack McLean runs like a 210-pound fullback. again operates from a different formation and for the third play in a row a Dartmouth back breaks up the middle as Tom Spangenberg carries for first down. Dartmouth then goes into a double wing formation and fullback Tom Parkinson cuts the Harvard end down as King fakes a pass and then sweeps around end for 10 yards. Bill Wellstead then comes into the game to kick a field goal into the teeth of a strong wind, and the Big Green takes a 3 to nothing lead before Harvard has yet touched the ball. On the Crimson's first play from scrimmage, the ball goes to Hobie Armstrong, their speedy left half. But before he can reach the line of scrimmage, Don McKinnon shoots through to spill him for a three-yard loss. In a critical fourth and one situation, Harvard elects to gamble for first down, but again, Armstrong is stopped cold by McKinnon, and Dartmouth takes over. Dartmouth's tomahawk unit comes into the game and fullback Pete Benzian throws a devastating block as Dana Kelly rolls out and passes to Gris Van Cura, who speeds up the sideline for 15 yards. The defensive unit, the Savages, does equally well as Horton, Davis, and Perrinchief work together to throw a Harvard end run for a two-yard loss. In the second quarter, the Dartmouth first team comes back in the game and it takes only two plays to score. Bill King rolls out to the right, faking a pass, and then rambles for 23 yards before finally being knocked out of bounds. King comes right back with the same play in the other direction, and halfbacks Tom Spangenberg and Dave Lawson do a fine job of blocking as King goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Bill Wellstead's extra point gives Dartmouth a 10 to nothing halftime lead. In the third quarter, right half Dave Lawson is tackled by two Harvard men as King fakes to Spangenberg and then appears to give the ball to Lawson. King keeps the ball in his hip, however, and fires a long pass to right end Scott Creelman. Quarterback King again performs a little sleight of hand, faking a handoff to Lawson and then bootlegging out a round end for 20 yards. That's big right tackle Dave Stenger who throws a crushing downfield block. Watch Dartmouth's two outstanding linebackers, Eddie Boyce and Don McKinnon, as they react to an end run and really greet the Harvard ball carrier with the help of Greer and King. In this game, Harvard was able to make but five first downs. 
fullback Tom Parkinson intercepts the Harvard pass and on the next play takes the ball on a belly playoff tackle and smashes his way through friend and foe alike for 18 yards. Quarterback Bill King then calls for double wing formation and rolls out to the right before throwing to right halfback Jack McLean down the middle for another 18 yard gain. A few plays later, King rolls out to his left and goes into the end zone for his second touchdown. Wellstead added the extra point. The Savages come into the game on the following kickoff and again live up to their names as five of them, led by Dave Perrinchief and Kenny Davis, smear the Harvard ball carrier on the 15-yard line. With a safe 17-0 lead, the Dartmouth secondary makes a mistake on pass defense, and Harvard's outstanding right halfback, Bill Taylor, catches a pass to go all the way for a score in what proves to be the only touchdown made against the Big Green in the first seven games. Dartmouth's Tomahawk unit comes into the game and immediately gets the score back as they march down the field for a touchdown in a series of straight plays, such as this quick opening shot by Chris Van Cura. On the next play, Vancouver again takes the handoff from Dana Kelly and pops through the middle. Kelly goes over for the score on a quarterback sneak as the Big Green wins 24 to 6. A huge crowd is expected at the Yale Bowl as there had been an advance sale of over 27,000 tickets, but a very cold, rainy day kept many people at home. game, the Big Green moves into Yale territory as Tom Spangenberg follows pulling left guard Eddie Boyce through the hole and left end Charlie Greer crosses over to throw a key downfield block. On the following play, fullback Tom Parkinson bowls his way over right tackle for 15 yards. The Dartmouth Savages enter the game. Defensive end Al Pierce does a fine job of warding off blockers and spilling the Yale ball carrier. Next play, the Eli quarterback tries to circle right end, but is nailed for a two-yard loss by Candy Davis, sophomore center from Albany, Georgia. The rain continues, but Bill King's passing is still dangerous as he rolls out and throws to Tom Parkinson, who makes a fine catch of that slippery pigskin. Tom Spangenberg then drives off right tackle for 15 yards and another first down. drive is halted when Jack McLean breaks through a gaping hole of a left tackle but loses the ball so the first half ends in a scoreless tie. Dartmouth takes the second half kickoff and immediately starts to march as Parkinson smashes off right tackle for seven yards. Captain Bill King carries all the way to the eight when he rolls out to the left and seeing his receivers covered reverses his field catching the Yale defense by surprise. the three, the Yale defense stiffens, so Bill Wellstead comes into the game and kicks his sixth field goal of the season to put Dartmouth out in front. Dartmouth's Tomahawk unit blocks well as quarterback Dana Kelly fakes to fullback Benzian, then hands to Dave Lawson on the scissors play back up the middle. In the fourth quarter, the field becomes a quagmire, but King is still able to run. Here, he fakes a rollout to the right and then follows his interference back to the left for 15 yards. Tom Parkinson hits off left tackle and fights his way for another first down. On a play the newspapers described as student body right, King follows a wave of interferers around right end and goes in for the touchdown to give Dartmouth a 9 to nothing lead. The Savages come into the game. When Yale attempts to pass, fullback Dick Horton covers his man perfectly and makes a great interception. Late in the game, when the Bulldogs attempt to circle end, McKinnon reacts all the way from his left linebacker position to make a bone-jarring tackle for a loss. Yale's deepest penetration of the game was to the Dartmouth 44-yard line, and the Big Green comes off the field with another important victory in spite of the muddy going.
final game of the season in Hanover was played on Dartmouth's annual Fall House Party Weekend. The Columbia Lions were considered to be a real threat as they were led by quarterback Archie Roberts, who at that time was the seventh leading passer in the nation. Jack McLean returns the kickoff for the Indians. The Indians wasted no time in proving their superiority as King fakes to Parkinson up the middle and then scampers for 28 yards around in behind beautiful blocks by McLean, Spangenberg, Creelman, and Greer. In just eight plays, the Big Green covers 76 yards as King carries around right in for the touchdown behind powerful blocking. next has the ball, King starts to the left, but then stops and hits Tom Spangenberg with a pass down the middle, good for 20 yards. On the following play, King fades back, fakes to the left, and then lobs a screen pass to the right. Dave Lawson takes the ball and rambles for 35 yards before being pulled down. Roberts does not have this kind of luck with his passes. He completes one to fullback Tom O'Connor, but Dick Horton comes up to smear the Columbia captain for seven-yard loss. The Lions gain a scoring opportunity when they recover a Dartmouth fumble, but Roberts is thrown for a 10-yard tackle Bill Blumenshine before he has a chance to throw. In the second quarter, Columbia has no better success against a rugged Indian defense as Creelman, McKinnon, Spangenberg, Curran, and several others get in on the tackle. On the next play, Roberts again attempts to take to the air but Don McKinnon shoots through to jar him for a 13-yard loss. Columbia's fourth punt, and it takes Dartmouth just two plays to score as King fakes twice, then drops back and throws a perfect strike to left end Charlie Greer in the end zone. The next time the Indians' first team is in the game, it again takes them but two plays to score, as this time King passes to Tom Spangenberg for 52 yards and a touchdown. Wellstead adds his third extra point to give Dartmouth a 21 to nothing halftime lead. On Dartmouth's first play in the third quarter, King fakes to Spangenberg and then throws to Charlie Greer for 25 yards. Two plays later, King tosses the ball to Spangenberg, receives a hand back, and then rolls out to throw to Greer for another touchdown. Next time the Indians have the ball, it takes but four plays to cover 83 yards. King starts it off with a 23-yard pass to Scotty Creelman. On one of the great plays of the season, King starts what looks to be a rollout to the left, but then throws a screen pass back to the right to Tom Spangenberg. Watch Boyce, then McKinnon, then Rungi, and finally Creelman all throw perfect blocks as Spangenberg goes all the way. Having played less than half the game, the first team comes out and King has set a new all-time Ivy one-game mark of 348 yards total offense. The Savages come into the game and defensive end Jan Lumi smashes through to spill the Columbia ball carrier for a loss. The Lions then try the other side, but meet with no better success as Candy Davis, Dave Perrinchief, and Bill Madden all react rapidly to throw the play for another loss. As the fourth period starts, Bill Madden, safety man for the Savages, intercepts his third pass of the game and returns for 17 yards. The Tomahawks also do their job well as Fence Wait, Kelly, and Benzian clear the way for a 15-yard John around in by Dave Lawson. Another big gain is made as Kelly sprints out to the right and throws to Lawson for 18 more yards. A few plays later, quarterback Dana Kelly sends the right half in motion, then drives at the middle himself for the touchdown. Wellstead's extra point makes the score 42 to nothing, and the Big Green has already clinched at least a tie for the Ivy League title with two games remaining on the schedule. November 17th, the Dartmouth team flew to Ithaca, New York, to meet Cornell. 
In their last two home appearances, Cornell had defeated Harvard and Princeton, and since this was their fall house party weekend, it was expected that they would be sky high in an effort to upset the Big Green. Cornell plays an inspired game. Just before the first quarter ended, Bob Milne, the Cornell fullback, goes over on fourth down for the first touchdown scored through the Indian line in the entire season. Behind for the first time, the Indians immediately come back on an 80-yard scoring drive. The big play is this 47-yard gain on a pass from King to Spangenberg, with end Charlie Greer leading the way for Tom. Two plays later, King receives fine blocks from Blumenshine, Spangenberg, and Parkinson as he rolls around end for 10 yards. On the next play, King goes over and Wellstead knots the score with his extra point. Dartmouth next gains possession of the ball on their own 11-yard line after a long Cornell punt. It takes just nine plays to cover the 89 yards for another touchdown. King starts the drive by faking a pass and then taking off around right end for 24 big yards. A pass from Captain King to Charlie Greer covers another 17. sprints out around left end and throws to Tom Spangenberg for 19 more. Watch fullback Tom Parkinson and right guard Jerry Raska throw devastating blocks as King again starts out around left end faking a pass and then running for another first down. King comes right back with a rollout to the right and throws to Lawson on the one yard line. On the following play King goes over for the touchdown. The Big Green again starts to move as Chris Van Cura takes the ball in a draw play at the middle for 14 yards. But there isn't time to score again as the half ends with Dartmouth ahead 14-7. Tom Spangenberg takes the second half kickoff nine yards deep in the end zone and then breaks right up the middle for over 40 yards. Spangenberg starts in motion, King fakes to Parkinson and gives the ball to Jack McLean who finds a big hole opened by McKinnon, Boyce, Curran and Blumenshine. Watch quarterback Bill King demonstrate that he can block as well as run and pass as he leads the way for Spangenberg. Tom does a beautiful job of running going for 38 yards before being tackled. play, right halfback Dave Lawson also receives fine blocking and appears to go in for a touchdown, but his fumble is recovered in the end zone by Cornell. At the start of the fourth quarter, Cornell not to score at 14-14. It takes Dartmouth just 10 plays to cover 83 yards and again take the lead. One of the big gainers was this rifle pass from King to Scotty Creelman. The Dartmouth offense is now going in high gear as on the next play, King carries around right end for 11 yards. And then on the following play, Rungi, Boyce, and McKinnon make perfect blocks as Spangenberg dashes up the middle and then powers his way through the last two men for the touchdown. Wellstead added the extra point. The Indians can't be stopped now as they immediately go 87 yards for another touchdown the next time they have the ball. This drive was started as King fakes a rollout and gives the ball to Spangenberg on a reverse up the middle. Spangenberg carries again on the following play and rambles for 34 yards behind the blocks of Rungi, Benzian, Lawson, King, and Greer. play to the other side, Jack McLean goes around left end for another big green first down. Dave Lawson then replaces McLean at right half and King slips him the ball after first faking to Parkinson. Lawson picks up 15 more yards before being brought down. Captain Billy King does a fine job of keeping his balance as he goes into the end zone for his third touchdown. With two seconds left in the game, Cornell scores against the Dartmouth Savages, but the big green wins 28 to 21. The victory, which was the 10th in a row for the Indians, clinched the Ivy League title for Dartmouth. The pressure was really on the Dartmouth team as they traveled to Palmer Stadium in Princeton, New Jersey, with 10 straight victories and ranked as one of only three major undefeated teams in the nation. 
On the first play following the kickoff, the Indians show the devastating blocking that made them a great team as Greer, Spangenberg, and Curran knocked their men down on the line of scrimmage, and then Rungi, McKinnon, Parkinson, and Creelman cut men down as King rambles for 30 yards. On the next play, running from a double flanker to the right, the Dartmouth line again fires out and opens a huge hole through which King rambles for 12 yards and another first down. On Dartmouth's third play, the Indians shift formations and again show overpowering blocking as Spangenberg takes a lateral from King and hits off tackle for nine more yards. A few plays later, King follows his blockers around left end for the touchdown. It has taken the Big Green just four minutes to chalk up the first score. Princeton comes back with a pair of quick touchdowns of their own, so Dartmouth trails 14 to seven in the second quarter. King then fakes to Parkinson and bootlegs around end. King outmaneuvers several tacklers and picks up a crushing peel back block by Creelman as he races for 31 yards. On the next play, Boyce, Blumenshine, and Parkinson open a hole and Spangenberg pops through for another first down. The Indians lose ground on a deflected pass, but King comes back with a rollout to the right and completes a long pass to Scotty Creelman on the 11-yard line. Two plays later, Spangenberg smashes over right guard for the touchdown. The Indians never believe in playing for a tie, so King gambles for a two-point conversion to put Dartmouth back in the lead 15-14. The Big Green immediately starts to move again as King throws to fullback Tom Parkinson for a first down. On the following play, King laterals the ball to Spangenberg and then takes it back again on a reverse, while in the meantime, right end Scotty Krillman has broken into the clear. like the Indians are on their way for another score when suddenly Jim Rockenback picks off one of King's passes and receives some fine blocking as he goes 83 yards for a touchdown. doesn't phase the Indians, they immediately come back with another scoring march, started off by this pass from King to Spangenberg. Billy King, as cool as ever under pressure, sprints out to the right and threads the needle on a pass to Dave Lawson, good for 14 more yards. King then fakes the roll out to the left, but slips the ball to Tom Spangenberg, who finds a big hole as he breaks back up the middle and fights his way to the 12-yard line. McLean carries to the seven. On the next play, King starts out around right end. When he sees his path blocked, Bill reverses his field, circles all the way back to the 23, and then goes in for the touchdown as the Dartmouth linemen react quickly and form a wall of blockers. When Princeton attempts their power sweep around end, Don McKinnon shows his all-American ability as he reacts out to spill the ball carry on the line of scrimmage. The half ends with a score knotted at 21 to 21, and the crowd of 43,000 agree that they have never seen a more thrilling first half. The Big Green starts a scoring march the first time they have the ball in the third quarter as Dave Lawson takes a pass from King, good for 24 yards. King then fakes to fullback Pete Benzian and gives the ball to Tom Spangenberg, who shoots through right guard for 20 yards. In this game, Spangenberg set a new all-time Ivy League record by rushing for 208 yards. Billy King hits off tackle into the end zone, and this touchdown enables him to finish third in the nation in scoring. Spangenberg continues to run wild as he hits up the middle behind the blocking of Rungi, Curran, McKinnon, and Keibel, and drives for 19 yards. On the next play, Spangenberg hits between the cross blocking of Blumenshine and Benzin, and pops through for another first down. In the fourth quarter, Bill Wellstead's seventh field goal of the season gives Dartmouth what appears to be a safe 10-point lead. In two years of play, Wellstead's golden right foot accounted for 77 points. When Princeton next attempts to pass, their tailback is thrown for a big loss by Charlie Greer. Dartmouth takes over the ball, and on the first down, King fakes twice and then throws to Jack McLean for 35 yards. However, the play is called back for an ineligible lineman downfield. And on the following play, Princeton intercepts another pass for a touchdown to again make it a close game.
It looks as if the Indians are in a tough spot with only a three-point lead and with a goal line 87 yards away. But this team has complete confidence in itself and opens a gaping hole in the Princeton line as Spangenberg races off tackle for 30 yards. An even bigger hole opens as King fakes a rollout to the right and hands off to Dave Lawson, who hits back over left guard for another first down. The same play is worked in the other direction as King slips the ball to Spangenberg, who then carries all the way to the three-yard line. Although considered a great defensive team, the Dartmouth offense was even better, finishing fourth in the nation. King again gives the ball to Spangenberg, and Tom goes over for the touchdown. Wellstead adds the extra point, and the Big Green clinches their first undefeated, untied season since the national championship team of 1925. Dartmouth dominated the Ivy League by a wide margin on both offense and defense, finished far ahead of such teams as Army, Navy, Pitt, and Syracuse in the race for the Lambert Trophy, and in the weeks following the final game, many members of the Dartmouth team were honored by being selected on one of the various all-star teams. The Dartmouth teams have never been lower than third in seven years of Ivy League play, but this year's Big Green team, which finished fourth in the nation in total offense and sixth in the nation in total defense, must be considered as the greatest he has yet produced. Now let's meet some of the players and coaches who will help make it such a wonderful season. Captain Bill King and All-American center Don McKinnon visit at Coach Blackman's home. King from Richmond, Virginia, set five new Ivy League records, finished third in the nation in scoring and seventh in the nation in total offense, and was the unanimous choice for all Ivy, all New England, and all East quarterback. Big center Don McKinnon is from Arlington, Massachusetts. In addition to being a unanimous All-Ivy and All-East choice, he was also named first-string center on many of the All-American teams, including the one selected from Look Magazine by the Football Writers of America. Backfield coach Will Volts looks over the exterior of Dartmouth's fabulous new field house with a pair of his top halfbacks. That's Dave Lawson, shifty right half from Knoxville, Tennessee, and Tom Spangenberg, All-Ivy left half from Darien, Connecticut. Let's go inside the huge structure where the Indians sometimes practice. That's line coach Jack Music talking with senior left tackle Bill Blumenschein from Great Neck, Long Island. To coach Music's right is Dale Runge, a junior tackle from Higginsville, Missouri. Coming down the steps of Dartmouth's Tuck School of Visit Administration is varsity end coach Joe Yukika with his starting ends. Junior right end Scott Creelman from Melrose, Massachusetts is captain elect for 1963. That's left end and pass catching star Charlie Greer from Fort Collins, Colorado. Freshman line coach Neil Putnam meets with Bill Curran in front of Dartmouth's new seven and a half million dollar Hopkins Center. Right guard Curran from Portland, Maine and senior left guard Ed Boyce from Sycamore, Illinois did an outstanding job on both offense and defense throughout the year. Head freshman coach Earl Hamilton meets with two of the most valuable but least publicized members of the starting team. That's Tom Parkinson, hard-blocking fullback from Amherst, Massachusetts, and Jack McLean, sophomore right half from Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. The Tomahawks, Dartmouth's offensive unit, gather around the piano with Frank Fincewaite and Skip Johnson beating out a boogie-woogie duet. Looking on are Dana Kelly, Dave Stanger, Jerry Razka, Vaughn Skinner, Al Stewart, Mel Myers, Chris Van Cura, Bill Wellstead, Ed Keibel, Pete Frederick, and Pete Benzian. Here's Dartmouth's defensive unit, the Savages, at the training table. Included here are Dave Perrinchief, Dick Horton, Candy Davis, Steve Hudak, Fred Billmeyer, Joel Feldman, Pete Sapione, Al Pierce, Bill Madden, Jan Lumi, Dave DeColesta, and John Matsky. That wraps up the football highlights of a memorable 1962 campaign. Many of these players will be wearing the green and white next fall, raising student and alumni expectations of a possible undefeated season again in 1963.